Welcome to yet another very special episode of TFL Talking Trucks podcast. Nicole, I say this every day, every episode, and people are like, it's not special. But it is truly special. Uh, we're here actually at our headquarters in Boulder, Colorado, and I have Nicole Kratz, the chief engineer behind the Silverado electric truck, EV here visiting us. I do, yes, thank you. Denver's beautiful this time of year. <laughs> thank you. So you were saying- A little were tiny say, bit of rain that you brought in here for me? Yeah, there's a little bit of rain. This is really the high desert, right? So right. we don't get a lot of rain. Okay. Only when we have to, very important videos and episodes to do. Okay. But you come out here skiing, right? In the winter I sometime? I do, I do. I am um, in Vail and Breckenridge and Beaver Creek. Unfortunately, two years ago, I tore my ACL, so I haven't oh. been back since, but okay. I'm coming next this next year, so I'll be back. Maybe I'll come visit. So we're doing several things in this episode. First of all, we have a 4WT work truck, which is the new 2024 Silverado EV. Yep. And we, TFL truck is going to be putting it to the test in the real world. <laughs> so this is no longer like a launch event, right? Yeah. This is Colorado, so we're here. And you were here showing me a few features of this truck. Yeah. So we figured, why not just do a podcast? Um, you're also announcing some news because 4WT is only one of the work trucks, right? There's also 3WT yes. and maybe others. Yes. So you have a 3WT now coming online. We do, we have a 3WT and it is offering 393 miles of range. Versus 450 versus in this guy. Versus 450. And why is that? Is it battery size basically, Battery right? sizes, okay. yep. We're um, offering battery sizes that have lower price points for our customers. We're gonna continue to roll things like that out in our future lineup. Um, just to have various options for customers depending on what they need from their vehicles. And these guys, the 4WTs, are being delivered right now, right, to, to they customers? Are. Yes, into our fleet customers' hands. Mostly fleet right now. Yeah, this is exclusively a fleet launch for the 4WT and 3WT for model year 24. Okay. Um, retail launches will start with our model year 24 RST. Okay, which is coming, what, just really soon, right? Yeah. In a few months? Yep. Okay. So, all right. So. Just really briefly, because it's raining, we're gonna jump inside because a lot of the cool features are actually inside this truck. They are. Uh, but just a few specs, 450 miles of range. This is still a dual motor setup. Of course, all wheel drive, four wheel drive. 10,000 pounds of towing and about 1,400 pounds maximum of payload. Correct, in yes. the 4WT. Yes. Now in the 3WT, yes. you've raised the payload and towing. I was just looking at the specs, 12,500 pounds of towing and 1750 pounds of payload. This is really important because we actually talked about this on a couple other episodes with you about the fact that um, weight matters on trucks and when we come out with launches like our um, ICE vehicles, we have a variety of vehicles that come out at the same time. And so the maximum towing range or the maximum payload is usually shown in those numbers. But because we came out with our 4WT first, which is our sort of heaviest package but highest range vehicle, we were able to give you guys all of the, um, I'll just say architecture bandwidth of this pickup truck. So now we're able to show you with our 3WT how much better we can get with payload and towing. And then you can only imagine if we had another um, vehicle that was even lighter or even less range, mm -hmm. how much more towing, how much more payload you could get out of it. Which is really important. I mean, after all, these are working vehicles. So every pound you can gain of usable payload, the better, right? Right. Um, so in 1750 is getting into that, you know, standard half ton, you know, the trucks that are currently people buying, right? The ICE vehicles. Yes. So I think it's very important. With a very respectable range at 390 miles, still very, very yes. competitive, still better than the EV pickups in the segment today. So we've got this top performer at 450 and even the next down that we're offering to our customers is even better than anything else out there today. All right, and let's just walk towards the back of this truck really quick. We're still um, <laughs> under the tree. Well, I don't melt, so it's okay. contrary to <laughs> we're, we're all good. Um, so it's still charging, right? It's the, it's the same as we've discussed before, up to 350 kilowatt speeds, uh, level three fast charging, and about, what, 100 miles in 10 minutes, right? 100 miles in 10 minutes. So um, 350, 350 kilowatt DC fast charging. It uh, really offers a great opportunity. I mean, the fact that you have 450 miles means you don't have to charge that often. So that's number one. People aren't going to be trying to stop as frequently as with some other competitors out there. And then when they do need to stop, we're the only ones offering the DC fast charge capability with a 350 kilowatt um, fast charger. So 100 miles in 10 minutes really gets you on your way very quickly. And then, I mean, 
that's not the ultimate limit, right? You're always making those fine re refinements, right? We are always trying to make things a little bit better, have a little bit faster charge. Um, all the things that we're doing are always to try to make our customers feel better about what they have. And these are things that are able to be OTA to our customers in the future over the air updates. Mm -hmm. So they get our improvements as they um, go through their ownership experience. And this truck is also wearing a tonneau cover. It is. I haven't seen this. I mean, at the launch event, I don't know if you showed any many tonneau covers. I don't remember that. Uh, but the tailgate is damped, so it just kind of gently lowers itself. And this, I'm forgetting the bed length now, but it's really sizable. I mean, really. Five feet 11 with the tailgate up, uh -huh. which is still the longest um, tail, uh, bed length of any of the EV pickups in the segment. Yes. And um, we're looking at the bed now. Yeah. <laughs> and the reason why I'm taking it apart, it's... <laughs> I'm just wondering. It's because it's a way to access the spare tire. Yeah. Right? It's lockable because it, the spare tire access for the tool to get in and lower the spare tire is inside of the pickup bed. Uh -huh. So we don't have any extra cost that we're carrying with having the lock be in the fascia on a traditional vehicle. And plus it's a little bit safer, right? Absolutely. So if, with the tailgate closed, it's harder to get access to that. Absolutely, yep. Especially with a tonneau mm -hmm. uh, on top of that. And of course, you know, we'll, I'll be using this because we'll, we have some towing tests in in the plan so two inch receiver of course all the wiring turtle brick controller you have tow haul mode you, you have all those features yep that yeah. are important there's a lot of basic features and advanced features in this work truck i would just say um, almost beyond what the customer's ex expectations would be for a work truck we really looked at what the fleet customers would want as well as just pain points of full-size truck ownership to make sure that we could put everything in um, that was possible in our fleet truck Okay, well, what do you say we get in? Because we kind of gave an over overview of the truck. Yeah. Um, and now I have the key. You gave me the key. I did. So let, let's get in. Okay. Yeah, let's jump in. By the way, huge rear doors. I mean, humongous rear doors and humongous space. Look at all the space back here. And you're in your comfortable driving position. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So there'll and be I'm, no um, complaints about rear seat let storage. Me just, let me just get in. Yeah, just really get quick. in. Absolutely. Um, I'm I'm almost 6'3", I like to say. People and the make... seat, front seat, because you were in here before, is already set to your driving position. Yeah. And I have a, it's like a limousine. You yeah. know, I can cross my leg. I'm, yeah, uh, it's silly for me. I'm so small. I mean, i <laughs> <laughs> My dogs really like sitting here. Because it's um, pretty much a flat floor it's here. It's a flat floor, yeah, basically. And we have the vents. Yep. Okay. And we have the uh, power and then the USB chargers. USB-Cs. Yep down here all right well let's get in power the thing up yeah let's do it so we can check it out so because the key is I have it with my person right it's be in my pocket the truck comes to life it does all on I, its own I didn't push anything there's no there's no button right there's nothing I'm not pushing anything that's right okay let me turn off the No push radio. of buttons and the truck just comes to life. It says ready with that little green um, outline of a truck. And it basically tells you that it's ready to go. And what we're seeing here is basically the way that the work truck is equipped, right? Um, you and I showed the RST version. It'll have, a, you know, different screens, different interior materials, right? It'll have oh yeah, just different feeling to it, right? Absolutely. This is very much the easy to clean interiors. Um, the floors are, are, floor, are without carpeting, just having that vinyl flooring to be able to easily clean it, wash it out, vacuum it out quickly. Um, the materials, the cost of materials here is to be easily replaced at a low cost for any of our fleet customers. We still offer though a huge amount of storage in here. Yeah, I was um, say. You know, very delightful for people's lunch bags and tool bags and things like that, even still inside the truck even though we've got still the front storage and the back seat huge amount of storage and of course the truck bed but pretty much everything that we could imagine putting into a work truck for our fleet customers is in this vehicle gotcha and um, i may have gotten this wrong in the past there's an off button and i, I got it wrong i think during one of the events yeah so tell me about this so um because this truck doesn't have a push to start where we also would then push it to turn it off. Yes. We wanted to give the customers the option that at any time they want to turn it off, they can turn it off. The truck, if you um, 
let's just say right now we just started the truck mm -hmm. and it actually lets the truck stay on if you open the door because let's just say you forgot your coffee this morning i didn't put it in drive you didn't put it in drive yet you just got in because you were busy in the morning you forgot your coffee you go back to your house to grab your coffee we didn't want to turn the truck off i just did that i opened my door exactly okay. maybe you've got your child in the back seat um, maybe you've got a phone call going that you want to leave on the truck whatever it is we're leaving that truck going um, but if you decided that you wanted to go back inside and stay inside for some reason, you can do this and turn the vehicle off. And that button is the vehicle off button. It's a virtual button. And now it's basically turning the truck off and saying, okay, you asked me to turn off and now I'm off. And the climate control system just shut down. Yep. If I open the door, the screens should really just turn off. Absolutely. Yep. And this is the charge screen that shows you what percent state of charge you're at. And we leave that on um, to make sure that you know where you're at when you're getting out so you can decide if you want to charge or not. By the way, right now it's really showing 99% approximately and 440 miles. But that just depends on your driving style, right? It does. Yeah, so. it was. we were just talking about this at 100% at state of charge. It was at 450 miles. Um, I've had it more than 450 at times. And then if you drive really aggressively, you can see less than that, of course, as well. It really just matters how you drive. So now it's natural for me when I want to get going, I want to push my brake pedal. So yep. when I do the truck comes back to life. That's right. So it will actually remind you, it said press brake to start. So because you use the vehicle off button and you didn't walk away, it kind of knows you're still in the truck. It knows the keys are still here. It thinks you might want something. So it's warning you. Probably, and probably you. sensing my weight. Mm, Does it sense no, my weight? No, no it's okay. just key fobs and, and door opening and door okay. closing and okay. stuff. Yeah. I was more, afraid about my simple. weight, you know? Yeah. I don't want it to know my weight. Okay. So now there's more features, right? So let's, let's kind of keep going. Yeah. So then we also have this extend mode feature and extend mode is something that lets the truck run for 60 minutes. And so let's say you're going shopping and you're going to various stores and you have your groceries inside and you want to keep your groceries cold while you go into another location, while you go um, do some family um, errands, you can basically turn the vehicle on and say that you want to leave it on for 60 minutes. This leaves the entire truck on. So headlights are on, the HVAC system is on, all of the screens as you can see is on. It is as if you could just drive away. In fact, you can see right now that you could decide to still just drive away. So it hasn't turned it out of what we call propulsion mode. It's okay. still ready to go. Okay, gotcha. I um, have used this also for, I'll say short stints of using our offboard power. So we have this 7.2 mm -hmm. kilowatt system. You can um, power things in the front. You can power things in the center console. And then there's that really large power unit in the back that has mm -hmm. a 220 and, and 120 volt outlets. Mm -hmm. um, so if you want to do a short term charge of, of devices, you can use the um, extend mode. If you want to run back inside and you're doing some things and you want it to be longer than this 20 minutes, you can also use extend mode. And then to get out of extend mode, again, all it is is this vehicle off. So vehicle off will always let the truck, let the customer decide when it wants the truck off if all the things that we've built in, you're not you know, necessarily jiving with. Well, life changes every day. Absolutely. Right? You know, what, you may have a dog in here, maybe a baby with you or whatever. Right. Whatever you may have. We don't advocate ever leaving children no, in the backseat for a long period of time. <laughs> yep. So this isn't intended to be anything like that. However, um, it is something that allows the customer to keep the truck running if they needed to for, you know, you're trying to get your trash taken to the carbon back. Or just for climate back, control. Heating, it, whatever, yep, heating yeah. up the cabin, cooling it down, whatever you want to do. Cool. And of course, I mean, this truck, because it's a 4WT, oh, let me turn yeah, it back turn. on. <laughs> it's okay. I didn't open the door. Yeah. Um, it does have the camera system. So all that 360 degree view, mm -hmm. all that stuff is here. So all the views are there. You can switch different views as you want and you can see where you're at. And people are used to oh, this already. Yeah, people are used to this already because this is available in the regular Silverado. Absolutely. As far as the camera view yep, and all that yep. stuff. So it's very much intuitive to a current Silverado owner. So yeah, because there's always this tension, especially for some of our listeners, right? Are they ready to switch? They're not ready to switch to electric, right? You know, everybody has to kind of decide for themselves, basically. Yeah, I, you know, 
I have been going back and forth. I, I grew up on um, internal combustion, full-size trucks. That's what I have driven until I started working on the Silverado EV. And I'll just say that honestly, once I went to EV, I really haven't gone back. It's met all of my needs for all the trailering that we do in our family with snowmobiles, boats, um, heavy loads, long hauls. Um, there's still some infrastructure constraints that are certainly different between mm -hmm. um, internal combustion and um, EVs, but so far, uh, I've said to you, my um, vehicle, my work truck has 20,000 miles on it, and those 20,000 miles have had an incredible amount of usage that any other full-size pickup truck, internal combustion truck would have. And also having a truck being a power generator, right, for your job yes. site or anything right i mean we so kind that, of we alluded to it already right yeah so let's talk about that that is power base uh -huh. and so um you can use this truck to the energy and the battery to drive you around to tow your stuff or um, our fleet customers are extraordinarily interested in our power base system which allows us to create offboard power and that offboard power allows you to keep the truck off um, it'll let you set your battery level to different range levels. So let's just say you're going to a job site and you're at 99% state of charge mm -hmm. right now. If you only have 50 miles to go home, you can say, I'm going to use all of my truck battery for my site usage. And then at 25%, the system will shut off because it wants to get you home. Right. So we and set you can it select so that, different levels, yep. right? 50%, whatever you yep, want. Yep. You can do whatever you want. And once you set that range level, you say use power base. And it says, okay, to use power base, you turn your vehicle off. So now that off button comes back to play. <laughs> okay, so you gotta go here and say off. There yep. you go. So now we can't really tell. We should have set something up. We should have set up like lights to shine well, or something. I was gonna bring out the coffee maker, but yeah. it's raining, so. Well, we could put it in the front, it would cover sure, it. Sure, sure. So anyway, now the front outlets are powered. This console light, um, uh, outlet is powered and the outlets in the back of the pickup bed for the 7.2 kilowatts are 100% powered. So the truck is off, you're not wasting energy with the HVAC system, you're not wasting energy with headlamps or anything else running in the background, but you're giving pull, full power out to whatever you're doing. So in Michigan, we just had a um, storm, we lost power the other day, mm -hmm. and I was able to use this power base system in my home, and I took that 220 um, volt outlet, and I actually powered my house for two days. And it was like 1% usage per hour to power my house. Did you have so, like an interconnect system? I mean, I do. I have a transfer switch uh, in yeah, my house yeah. that I use actually a gas generator before I had an EV. Mm -hmm. So that transfer switch I just used from the Silverado um, 220 line instead of the gas generator 220 yeah. line. Still plugged it into the transfer switch. And I was able to power my house for a couple days um, during the, the storm and, and trying to recover all the electricity. And could you use your house almost as if nothing happened? The or? kids did not know the power was out that's really interesting yep they didn't yeah. know anything about the power being out they um were surprised when they woke up in the morning and heard all the neighbors, other generators yeah or or other people may not have it that's yeah. right yeah yep can i cool. monitor i guess we have nothing plugged in so we can't really monitor the usage because nothing is using it right now correct you can monitor um, it when you're actually using it um but right now because we don't have anything um plugged in it's not going to show us so it will show you. It'll oh, show you. right here on the circle. Yeah, right? it'll show you your usage. You can also add time if you didn't. If you, we forgot to talk about the timer, but if you wanted to add time and you wanted it to go longer, mm -hmm. um, it tells you how much range you've used so far. And then it also, if we had turned that timer off, it would have. Um, yeah, we already are in power base, so you yeah, can turn yeah. it off. But we could have used just the thirty percent, and it'll tell you where you're at versus your battery power as well. And also, while driving, you could still charge some tools, right? So yeah. those, it's not like you have to be stationary, right? No, yeah, all these outlets, whenever the truck is on, the power outlets are always powered. So um, in the front, I have um, charged batteries for tools, for um, battery uh, uh, wireless tools. Uh -huh. Um, we've put heaters in the back of the pickup bed to um, dry out some of our gear. 
and we do that while we're driving down the road. We've actually had crock pots going in the back of the truck tied down, heating up food on our way to a tailgate. I mean, That's the cool. possibilities are endless. Obviously, this is focused on a fleet customer, and so the big deal for this is um, powering their tools, charging their tools from site to site, making sure that they're ready to go when they go from site to site. But this system, this power-based system, is also in our retail models, and so the possibilities kind of become endless when you start to think about all the things that you could use power for in your pickup truck. By the way, I just turned it back on by pushing the brake pedal. That's right. So now the truck came back to life, basically. Yep. Kind of in nor and the AC is on. Yep. So ventilation is on, and that's that's pretty cool. And so for, um, I was going to say transmission, but it's not really a transmission. No. <laughs> it's a one on a tree. Can I call it that? One on, yeah, yeah. It's instead of three on a, a tree. I used to drive a three on the tree, <laughs> yeah. Um, so this is reverse and drive. Right. And neutral. If yeah. you see that yeah, you yeah. pull it back towards you, you can get to neutral. Uh -huh. Back towards you and down a little is how that thing works. Oh, that's drive. There you go. There it is in neutral. So in theory, it could roll. It is rolling. It is rolling. Yeah. Yeah. See, it works. Yeah. Um, yeah. So electric motors. So there's no transmissions. There's no shift busyness. There's no... Um, waiting for downshifts, it's instantaneous torque, but we still have things people are used to, like park, reverse, drive. We make sure that you can put it in neutral to go through a, a car wash. And, um, you know, everything's very intuitive, like an internal combustion uh, vehicle would be, just with an EV with some motors, mm -hmm. drive units. And s we haven't mentioned the power yet, so about up to 510 horsepower mm -hmm. combined. Yep. And about 600-ish pound-feet of torque yep. combined. But if you want all the beans, I would say, we like to say beans. So in tow haul mode, it gives you a little bit more oomph. Is that fair to say? Yeah, there's more torque available in tow haul mode. So um, when you're towing a heavy trailer, if you don't want to be heavy into the throttle, or if you're towing the heaviest trailer and you're at max throttle, of course, you don't want that um, to slow you down. And so in tow haul, we give you that extra torque available in the motors and in the drive units to be able to tow heavier loads and heavier trailers. And so it's not a typical way I'm thinking about tow haul mode, right? Because in the traditional internal combustion truck or diesel truck, right? I would, it has to do with the transmission shifting, you know, keeping the engine in the exact RPM, right? And or not overheating the transmission, right? It's a totally kind of different way of thinking about the mode. Yeah, I mean, internal combustion engines with transmissions, we use tow haul because we want to protect the transmission from overheating, essentially. Shift busyness on um, grades, towing heavy, um, heavy trailers, wanting to get and stay in a lower gear longer. So tow haul mode will actually keep you in a lower right, gear. while descending. While descending, right. exactly. So um, in EVs, it's a total mind shift to, um, we really could tow our heaviest trailer without tow haul mode it's really about the comfort that you have and how far into the pedal you are and what your vehicle speed needs to stay at to be able to maintain that load so the heaviest trailer on a really aggressive grade would be something where i would use tow haul otherwise i i don't really use it it's not something that i need to have um, but when you need that extra torque it's certainly there and available Okay, so while we're talking about towing, right, let me just push it, and if, you, if you're watching this, I was going to show the range yeah, estimation, and we sure. need to talk about that, because that's also a unique feature, right? It is. So, um, do you see this? Um, there's 440 miles, technically, range left currently in this truck, and I push the tow haul mode, little symbol comes on, so I know I'm in tow haul mode, and my range starts to decrease, because the truck is trying to <laughs> predict what I'm going to do, but it doesn't know what I want to do yet. Yeah, so we um, we really looked at all of the pain points associated with EV customers and their perceptions of towing. And everyone um, out there sort of thinks that when you tow with an EV, um, your range just drops like a rock. And it really still, just like internal combustion engines, depends on how heavy of a trailer that you have, how fast you're going. I mean, all the things that are in and, internal combustion. And aerodynamics, too. In aerodynamics, yeah. absolutely. Everything is very similar between ICE and EV. But we recognize that range anxiety is still a thing. And so what we've done is purposely dropped the range in half. Which is what just did. Which is what that just yeah. did. And then as you drive around, let's just say you drove in tow haul without a trailer attached. As you drive around, it's actually going to earn its way back up to that 440 mile range that you just showed. 
Is so, it sensing the load it is. Uh, on the vehicle? Yep. Basically? It's yeah. just looking at how much load you're actually using. So this is sort of a, a just set value where we don't know anything about your drive. And then as you drive, we learn what load you have and it'll adjust that range in tow haul as you go. And so if you have a heavy trailer on the back, let's just say you have a sometimes people overload their trailers. Let's say you've gotten a really heavy trailer. You might actually get less than 224 miles. Mm -hmm. It'll earn its way down also. So it just depends on how much load the truck is um, carrying and it'll adjust that range over time. Yeah, that happens. I mean, sometimes people don't realize, you know, yeah. how heavy their extra vehicle is they're pulling or whatever. Yeah, or, you know, you do the GCW calculations, the combined weight calculations, mm -hmm. and then you put, you know, three family members in the back seat and you get over. It's it's fine. I mean, that, I mean, not fine. We don't advocate it, but it happens. Yeah. And when it does, this is still going to uh, modify and recalculate your range, whether you're heavier or lighter. It's going to move that range and give you a better prediction over time as to how much range you have. And then, um, can we go to the trip? Um, yeah, the vehicle see. status. So vehicle status. So um, you can learn kind of different things about your vehicle. Mm -hmm. Although we don't have an RST, it's showing a kind of a <laughs> fancy truck, but that's all right. That's okay. all right. You know what? It's kind of cool to have fun. Yeah. I, I would say this is fun. Yeah. You know, more more people more <laughs> people should do this because right now on the screen I'm kind of have a three dimensional model of the truck and I can learn different things about it, like for example, tire pressures. Yep. Right. Why not have more fun? Um, so I can obviously do my trip meters. Yep. So if you click. Um, energy usage, all that stuff. Yep. And each of these is another um, detail, and then it'll allow you to add it to the screen. So if you're looking for, you know, how much efficient efficiency that you're driving at over time, you can actually add it to the display. To the center one. Yep. So I think we added that. Yeah, earlier. that was already there. So we can add that one. There you go. So I can monitor that here as well. Then it'll well tell you how much energy you're using with driving versus how many how much energy you're using with the climate control on or a DC fast charge prep. So which, you are conditioning the battery. We're not now, but if you were it would show you that it's oh, using more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you are but sure the solar oh, yeah. EV is capable of that. Absolutely. Yeah. So the big thing is that it'll auto do it if you um set a, a navigation system um uh, charge location, location. Yeah, sorry, yeah. that you want to go to and it knows it's within a certain amount of time, let's just say 30 minutes to an hour of that charge location, it'll automatically start and it'll warn you that it did. It'll pop up a notification, mm -hmm. but it'll automatically start that DC fast charge prep. You can also go in um, and tell it that you want to do a DC fast charge prep in the menu, but the Google Maps integration is the easiest way for customers to do the DC fast charge. Yeah, I like that. Charge. I mean, this is kind of my home base, so mm -hmm. I kind of I know where this, some of the stations are. Yeah. But I was just trying to play around with this, and I know like the fastest one is mm -hmm. the Electrify America near me. Yep. Um, and it's about eight minutes away. On long trips, if it doesn't think you can get to your actual destination, it'll tell you that you need to stop, you need to charge. It'll tell you how much data charge to put in to get to your destination. It's all fully integrated within the Google Maps system. Or sometimes, I mean, I've done many trips in other vehicles, electric vehicles, sometimes just slowing down your speed, your ultimate highway mm -hmm. speed just helps you. Yeah, because, absolutely. You know, you're going 75, well, maybe go 65 for a little while. and. You, you'll get to your next location. It, so. I mean, it's the same thing for um, gas vehicles. I've embarrassingly run out of gas before in my internal combustion trucks. And when you start to see you're running on fumes, you slow down, right? The dynamics are all there. The physics are all there. Yeah. And so the same thing is true for EVs. And you can watch in all of those information that we give you now with the kilowatt usage and other things. You can just watch yourself improving your, um, your uh, efficiencies. By the way, we, we do a lot of real-world testing. That's what I'm proud of at TFL Truck uh, with all the pickup trucks and SUVs as well. And we just talked about halving our range, right, with mm -hmm. towing. This exists with diesel trucks and gasoline trucks. Sometimes it's worse than half, like you said. Yeah. But we, we've been, or at least I've been trained, that I can always find the next station and refuel quickly, right? So having an electric vehicle, just for me, it kind of raised that issue a little bit to the foreground because there are not as many chargers as fueling stations right now because we're still in their early days, right? Yeah. But it's, the physics is still the same. 
Yeah, yeah I, I mean, there's really a kind of misunderstanding about EVs can't tow. And unfortunately, there's some competitors out there that don't have the 450 miles of range that we have. And so if you start at 300 and you cut your range in half because you've got a heavy trailer, you're only getting 100, 150 miles out of it. That is the same as a internal combustion vehicle who goes from 18 miles per gallon to seven mm -hmm. because they've got a really heavy trailer on the back. So the issue isn't so much rings anxiety as it is charger anxiety. Mm -hmm. We know we have a gas station essentially around every corner. There's a couple times like I running out of gas sure. that you'll that you'll do it. Okay, no I've judgment. Been, uh, I've been in Utah before and no on, a, on a long stretch, I've been there before okay. too. <laughs> no judgment, please. But I mean, in general, if you can get to a charger, then you're okay. And having this 450 miles of range, I mean, I haven't said it very boldly before, but I'll say it now. There is no one else that can go further than us, whether it's with a trailer, with a heavy trailer, or just unladen. I mean, the fact of the matter is when you're getting 450 miles of range without a trailer on it, it means you're getting with a 10,000 pound trailer on it, you know, depending on your, if you're going up Eisenhower Pass mm -hmm. or whether you're on a flat ground, you know, 250 miles. You, the fact is that this truck is the best EV pickup to tow with because of the fact that it has all of this range. Even the 3WT with 393 miles is still better than anyone else out there. And we will go further than any other competitor. And I think that's really important for our customers to understand. Cool. Well, let me just kind of bring up a couple of, well, I guess people are, what people are saying about the Silverado AV. Mm -hmm. So first of all, or the work truck specifically, yeah. uh, price, right? It's relatively expensive. And also the truck's weight itself, right? Mm -hmm. Because we mentioned about payload, we talked about towing, we talked about giving back those pounds to the user. But I mean, for the BT, I believe last time I checked, it was about $78,000 as far as the truck's cost. That's right. But we just talked about all these features. Uh, but for a work truck, that seems really high. Yeah, and actually we went out and talked to our fleet customers and asked them for this first year what they wanted in their truck because we could have come out with a less expensive vehicle with less options on it. Mm -hmm. They actually asked us for the um, 450 range pack. At that time it was 400 miles. Um, and they asked us for that uh, offboard power capability that's that 10.2 ultimately offboard power but the 7.2 onboard and so when you start adding up all of these um, features it does get to be the max price point they asked us for that because they felt that was what they were going to be using now in our future we have models that will um, you'll be able to option things less so you don't need all of these bells and whistles you can pick and choose and then we've got other range packs that drop the price in fact um, I think Mark Royce, and you'll have to look it up because I don't have the number, but Mark Royce just recently um, said what the price was of our 3WT, and that 3WT price went down okay. because of the fact that it's 393 miles and not 450. And so you'll see that in the EV segment overall, that as you ask for less range, the price goes down as well. Less features, the price goes down. And we feel very comfortable and confident that we will have an EV for everyone to pick from that's at a price point that they can afford. That's fair. And then let's talk about a little bit more about off-roading. So this truck, as we sit in it right now, is not a special off-road model, mm -mm. right? It's got all-wheel drive. It's got, uh, well, how does that work? I mean, how does the traction of this truck work? I mean, are you doing, let's say we're on ice, are you doing all the same kind of calculation for traction and stability as you would in a normal vehicle, right? Yeah, I mean, everything's pretty similar in terms of wheel slip. Um, looking at which wheel is slipping, putting torque to that wheel. Um, we have two motors front and rear that we can apply um, torque to as well for like an all-wheel drive kind of a situation, so e-all-wheel drive. Mm -hmm. um, it's all very similar to internal combustion vehicles. People shouldn't notice a difference in how it performs in snow and ice and, and slippery conditions and things like that. Um, we've got coil suspension and 18-inch wheels and tires, so the truck is capable to go down two tracks and, and for frankly pass where the utilities are going to take these trucks down to to fix poles and and go to locations where they're building infrastructure yeah, yeah. but you also teased us with like a trail boss or special <laughs> future models right i can't believe you remembered that I, I, I when i saw that truck sitting taller with red toe awesome, toe it? points in the front and yeah yeah so that is our trail boss that we've talked about it's okay. a two inch lifted truck 
it's on coil suspension and it allows you to you know go all on to the the chevrolet off-road full-size pickup truck capability that people just come to appreciate and love um, it uh, has rear steer as well with it and so you'll be able to do some very cool things with off-roading that we have in our ev architecture and so i think it's going to be a really really interesting product for our customers and i think people are going to really um, want to have it yeah because I mean, I'm glad that this world is expanding, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, a lot of, you know, commenters and a lot of people in the industry are saying, you know, there's those, you know, Raptor trucks and TRX trucks and General Motors, you know, technically wasn't playing on maybe on the same levels as far as power output and other, you know, maybe other comparables. But I mean, you still have the Hummer, right? The GMC yeah. brand has, you know, the Hummer brand. So you're still thinking about those other use cases, like off-road use cases and extreme, extreme use cases. Yeah, I mean, this, the like the the Hummer EV is our super truck. It's it's got um, three motors, full off-road capability, crab walk, all of these amazing features that make it like adjustable a, height. Yeah, air suspension, adjustable height. It can raise, it can lower. It's got the the watts to freedom mode where it just takes off under i think it's four seconds like three and a half seconds or something like that um, we've i think we verified like 3.4 seconds yeah, or less yeah. yeah so i don't i don't have that product but you know the the point of it is that we want to offer something for every kind of customer um i don't think that we need everything in everywhere but certainly the Trail Boss is a very popular um, truck for Chevrolet customers, and it's one that people really um, desire, and we're gonna give it to them. Yeah, because I see the Trail Boss name right now in the Colorado and Silverado 1500s. It's kind of a little bit more affordable off-road choice. Correct. Right? I may not have the money for the ZR2 or the Bison trucks, but I may have the money for the Trail Boss. Bam, I can go right there. That'll be very similar for us as well. You'll see that um, from a price point perspective as well as from a contenting perspective. People who want that lifted off-road feel but don't want all of the bells and whistles and features that are in some of the other models. But Chevrolet also has a full ICE mm -hmm. range, you know, from the mid-size truck to the heavy-duty trucks to the mid, uh, you know, full-size trucks, uh, half tons, all that stuff. And now EVs. Yeah. So it's not like <laughs> people are often write me messages that are like, you know, I'm not switching tomorrow to an electric truck. You don't have to. Right. But you could. Right. I mean, if you want to, you can. We're making it um, very easy to transition from an ICE into an EV. I think that this is a no excuses truck that really will show off well the capability of an EV full-size pickup truck and the fact that these pain points that folks talk about are really not huge pain points. Um, we're going to work on the infrastructure. We've got a lot of partnerships. We just had a partnership that we announced with Tesla to use the Tesla supercharger network. Mm -hmm. And so we're doing everything that we can to reduce and eliminate that charger anxiety. And then, of course, we've basically eliminated um, range anxiety in this truck. I mean, there's no question that, that between the 4WT and 3WT, you're seeing amazing range for people. Yeah, very cool. And I think the final point I would like to hit here is maintenance, right? Um, it's kind of a big sticking point to a lot of people and even like introducing turbocharging to trucks yep. was a huge step for a lot of people because people are saying well i don't want to replace a turbocharger or i don't know how to work on that and <laughs> a lot of people forget that there are fewer parts here in this truck is that yeah. is that fair to say yeah evs have way less parts to break they have way less parts for maintenance um we don't have to go in for oil changes we don't have it, all of the air change, induction, transmission fluid changes, transmission fluid, exhaust, having all of the parts that are in there. I think that the EV cost of ownership is definitely a more positive case for um, ownership than it is on internal combustion trucks. It's just a matter of um, having people understand what the difference is and what they really need to do to maintain their EVs. And it's very little. Um, tire rotations have been the only thing I've done in, in 20,000 miles. Yeah, but they're still, I mean, they're still coolant circuits, right? I yeah. mean, because they, you know, the motors often need uh, cooling or heating and the batteries, right? Yeah, need cooling there's or definitely a coolant circuit. The res uh, batteries are definitely the big part of that coolant circuit. Of course, you need heat. And so there's a coolant circuit inside of the HVAC module. And so some of those things most certainly are similar between internal combustion. But I think the maintenance and then just the number of parts overall that we have in an EV versus an internal combustion just means less parts to break, less time 
um, having to deal with um, service. Awesome. Well, thank you for coming out here to our neck of the woods. Absolutely. Um, during kind of fall, summer months, and uh, yeah. it's pretty amazing. I appreciate it. And um, well, the truck is here because I'm going to put it to the test. So this is like to be continued <laughs> because I'm going to be doing a range test with a trailer. Without the trailer, I'm going to be doing an eye gauntlet towing test. And maybe, you know what? I might do um, a little acceleration, simultaneous acceleration exercise with another vehicle, potentially. We are giving you this truck to try it out, and um, the team stands behind how great of a product it is, so I can't wait to hear how it goes for you. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks. Good to see you again. Yeah, it was great. Thank you.